Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia and another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We've moved forward a little bit further here. We are into April and that means we are into full swing with planting. We've got the versatile hooked up here to the uh, smaller planter, of course the Borgo smaller planter, the CD875. And behind that we've got the new hole in the T8 hooked up to the John Deere planter. Now we're going to go and get some corn planted with this and we're going to use the tractor in the front here to go and plant some oats. Now I was umming and ahhing about what to plant last time and we have been having a little look at the calendar and the planting schedules and income and everything like that and have chosen to go with oats and I'll explain a little bit more why. So having a look here at oats and showing price fluctuations, our peak price is in December. Now if we were to put soybeans in we would have to wait another six months from there to get any income off these fields and uh, I think we really need to start seeing some money rolling into the farm because we're spending more than we can earn at the moment and uh, these animals really are quite hungry so the plan is to head on in there and get some oats planted we see we're in the window there we can harvest those in july or august and the bonus is we can get some straw now we haven't been using too much straw in our tmr mixes but we have been using it to pad things out a little bit which is good because we are chewing through the maize silage we have in storage as well as the grass silage we've had to buy so fortunately our grass has germinated and we do have that growing so we'll be able to supply our own silage soon and you can see here corn we're just into the planting window for that and of course we're gonna have to wait a while before we get any more maize ready to harvest to get some maize silage put in we do still have a lot uh, going through the production in the fermenting silo so we do have enough it's just not fermenting quite as quick as we need so we need, need to get that in and uh, topped up as well i did consider sorghum but uh, we don't get any um, any straw off that so that was the reason we've gone with the oats however the other exciting news We've started producing milk. So the Holsteins here, it's almost 17,000 litres of milk, and this lot here, almost 19,000 litres of milk. It's all up, 35,000 litres. And we have a look here in time saving stock check, and you can see we've got 27 gram worth of milk sitting there, or 26 if we sold it at today's prices. So we're going to have to figure out a way to sell that. We don't have a tr tanker or trailer or anything at this stage to get that delivered down to Chilliwack Dairy. So we're going to have to figure out what to go and buy to get that done. But today's main job is to head on over. We're going to put corn here in field 135, and these two fields here are going to become our oats. And we do still have field 195 down here to do something with. Um, I'm almost thinking we might need to put something in there for some feed as well. So possibly, possibly head down and put some corn in there as well. But we have obviously got the versatile hooked up as well, so we're going to try and make use of both these tractors. We're going to head the versatile over first, get that set up on some coarse play, planting some oats, and then we're going to follow behind the corn all set up here in the New Holland and going get started on that. Uh, one other thing we are going to have to buy at some stage, we do still need a diesel uh, tank on site um, at the moment. If any diesel need, we need to head down into town and get that filled up somewhere else. So we do need to get that sorted out as well. But again, we're down to just under $7,000. So we don't have a huge amount to spend. Anyhow, that's enough jibber jabbering. Let's go and get some seed and fertilizer into the planters and go and get started on some seeding. So just as we're getting the seed here, and of course we do have to buy this as well, so that's also chewing through our money. Another $3,000 just about gone. You can look over and see in the back the grass which has germinated and is growing, so that's good to see. It should be all up to standard, I think. It's got all the lime on it it needs, it's got all the fertilizer it needs. So we should just be able to leave it there to grow, and uh, we'll be able to get in and get that chopped very soon for some silage. Again, figure out the best way to do it. I'm leaning towards leaning towards putting it into bales and getting it wrapped and everything like that. But we might use the bagger. I did mention that last time as an option. But let's head on down here, down the road, and go and get into this big field and get started with planting some oats. All right, we're over here. We've got oats selected in the planter. So we're getting the right crop planted, which is a good start. We'll just pop in here. I have already set up the course play course. So we'll just go and take a look at that very quickly. And there you go, 133 three and 134 all covered. It cuts out here appropriately for going around that little bit of a ditch. And uh, we'll just go up and down. We've set it on lands, of course, uh, four headland passes and then lands. So we don't have to try and turn too tightly with this back on itself. But I think we should be able to just press start. So we'll start off on first waypoint, press go there. And hopefully everything's going to be going pretty smoothly. And there we go. That's going. I was worried that this might be a little bit wide. Uh, the tractor might be a bit wide for this planter, but actually it doesn't look too bad sitting there behind it. We needed a uh, 240 horsepower to pull it, and both the Versatile and the New Holland are our only tractors over 200 horse. The John Deere and the Kubota are both a little bit underpowered for doing this task, so we have had to resort to our big workhorse here to get this one done. The amount we are up and going, oats going into the field. 
and uh, we'll get this one planted. A few weeds in there in the areas we didn't plough of course so we are going to have some weed management to take care of further down the track but uh, that is something to worry about a little bit later on. But let's just let this one carry on. We'll uh, come and hang out with it for a little bit very soon but I'm going to go over and get the New Holland set up and come and start on planting the corn in the field next door here. Alright first things first, let's try and get this in under here and get the seed opened. We should be able to get that filled up, perfect. Pull forward a little bit more. Now I can't remember if this is fertiliser or herbicide. I think it might be herbicide in this. Doesn't actually have anything in it at the moment. So let's just see if we can put some, uh, put a little bit of fertiliser in it that we can use for the planter. There we go, 1000 litres of liquid fertiliser in there now. So we should be able to jump back up here into the tractor. Hopefully find ourselves in the right position to get that filled up. Sometimes a little bit tricky to find the correct trigger, but we'll just try and back up against it and see if we can fill it that way. There we go, that's filling. It looks like we had to have the covers open, which makes sense. As we get that closed off, 757 litres of fertiliser. So we'll see how far we can get through this field with the seed and fertiliser we've got, and uh, whether we have to come over and buy any more. But of course, I was mindful of the fact we might want to buy some herbicide in the future as well, so we might need to use that tank and repurpose it for something else. We're just going to pull in straight here over the road, not too far to go to get over into this field and get started, and we'll get everything unfolded and get underway. Looking forward to getting some corn in. This is the first time we've planted corn ourselves, of course. Uh, the last corn we had came pre planted with the uh, farm, with the fields we bought. But there we go, those wings all folded down. Nice and wide this planter, she covers the land pretty quickly. I did have a look, the other tractor is going to take an hour and 40 minutes to plant the oats in the field over there, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But there we are, we've got corn selected, that turned on, lowered down. There we are, we're good to go, you can see the uh, fertiliser being applied on the back there. We've got our automatic application rate and everything like that all turned on and uh, everything seems to be running as is expected including getting that nice uh, strip planting effect there from the planter so I think we'll set ourselves up a GPS course as we run along this edge of the field do a couple of head and passes and then get into the planting proper and we'll jump into a little bit of a montage so we'll catch up with you probably when we've got this field a little bit closer to being finished or completely done before we get too far though I have just noticed our fuel indicator is flashing down in the bottom corner there, which uh, doesn't instill me with much confidence. So we will go and take a look, we might shoot down and get that filled up before we go too much further. Uh, we won't bother showing you doing that, we're just going to head on down to one of the uh, fuel pill, pill points on the map and go get some more fuel purchased. So we'll do that and uh, get around the other end of the field, and do that and then we'll catch you when we're uh, finished in here.
Well, we've just about got the last of the corn planted here in the field, running down the very last pass. Everything's gone very well, apart from the fact it started raining now. I probably should have stopped. I do realise you would avoid planting in the rain, otherwise everything gets all glugged up and sticky soil and everything stuck around wheels and everything like that. But uh, we've just ploughed on through this and carried on. So what I've been thinking as we've been going, I reckon we're going to head down to the other field over with the uh, over in the distance, over that way. I think it's 195. And we're going to go over and put some corn over in there as well. I think we need to give ourselves as much corn as we can to be able to make sure we make enough silage to keep ourselves going for another 12 months. Uh, a little bit worried we're not going to have enough, particularly if we want to increase the number of animals we have with the feedlot. Uh, as for the other planter, the oats over there, they must be getting very close to running out of seed. So we'll get back over to the farm. We will grab the seed tender and bring over some seed and maybe some fertilizer for them so they can keep going. And then we'll get topped up and head on down to that field. I also need to put some lime on it, so we might get the spreader out and uh, do that at the same time. There we go, that is that field. Minus this little bit right here, always a frustrating little section you miss or something on the corner. We'll just put that down and do that. There we go, and that's done. So we'll get that turned off, fold it up, head on back over to the yard, grab that tender and come back over and see the tractor down there. Got the seed tender on the back, head on over here to the tractor. I'm going to get it filled up with seed. Now for whatever reason, I'm having issues with this little seed tender, I did remember it as I pulled it out. Uh, we can't get both hoppers to fill. We've managed to get seed into one, I would have put some fertilizer in the other, but uh, we couldn't get it to fill up, so I'm not sure what that issue is, uh, whether we can fix it or anything like that, but we're just going to have to make do with what we've got. So we'll get pulled in over here, we'll see if we can find the uh, openings, get into the hopper and get this all topped up. Of course the workers folded everything up, very efficient of them, so uh, let's just see, I do know where the uh, seed goes in the back one, I think, it does get high enough, but I think to get close enough we might have to be around the end. So we got, we're getting some more oats in, we don't actually need any more fertiliser, we've only used about a quarter of the tank, which is good, but we've certainly managed to get through all of the seed. Now, I was trying to say before, uh, we did have to borrow some more money, we had run out, and uh, that stopped the worker, of course we have to pay wages. And also, we needed to buy some more uh, product here, so we have to borrow another 10 grand on the loan. We've just about chewed through all of that doing this. But let's just pop in here, get this on nearest waypoint, which it is, press play. And they should carry on with getting the oats planted. There we are, so we'll leave them going. I think, just looking across the field, we're going to need more seed. We're going to have to borrow a little bit more money yet, so uh, just something to be mindful of. But let's leave them going here, and we are going to go and head on over and uh, plant some more corn. So before we go and plant any corn down here in this field, we're going to give it the best chance possible to have a high yield. So we will shoot down and just put some lime on it. Uh, we've had to borrow some more money again, another 10 grand into the loan. We're almost actually at a million dollars, which, uh, well, if it wasn't for the fact I had almost half a million dollars worth of soybeans sitting in the bins, uh, would be a little bit daunting. But we do have a decent amount of money sitting there, ready to be realised as well as we're starting to earn some money off the milk, which is uh, which is good. So I'm not too concerned just yet about how far our debt is going. Uh, I'd like to get it cleared though, because we do want to be able to build that feedlot at some stage. So we're going to head down, we'll shoot down and get this done as quick as we can. Jump into a little bit of a time lapse racing around, spring some lime. Shouldn't take too long, and uh, then we'll get back and be into some more planting. All right, here we are. We'll get this all turned on and we'll get into the field. Hopefully we've got enough lime to do it all in one pass. I think we should. I'm pretty sure just remembering back to some of the other fields how much it took. We'll just uh, get a focus actually. We'll get through this part here. We'll focus on getting the main part here of the field done. And uh, if we don't get it all done, that'll just be that little bit out there in front near the road, which uh, won't quite have enough lime on it, but I reckon we should. Just looking at how quickly we're using it up, we should be good to go. So we'll just jump into a very quick time lapse, get this done, and uh, we'll see you back at the yard very soon. But when I look 
I said I wouldn't go back for another load, but uh, we were so far short, I figured it was worthwhile going back, and we've actually used up, we've got 50% more, we've used up 35 for that, so it was a decent amount, there we are, all done, so let's head on back down to the yard, go grab the New Holland, we'll come back over and make a start on planting some corn here. So back down here with the planter, we're just going to get pulled in here. I didn't actually check that we could direct drill. I'm pretty sure we can direct drill with this planter. Uh, we might find out in just a second that we actually need to come down and do some tillage first. But I'm feeling confident we can. I'm sure there was a section of the last field we went across that hadn't quite been cultivated properly and we managed to plant into it. Let's find out. This unfolded. There we are. Turn it on. Hold that down. Looks like we're getting a texture change. Yes we are and we're using up seeds. So that's a positive that we're going to get this planted. So ideally we'd probably get rid of this little angle part, this is not going to be much fun for course play when we come to uh, harvest this with the silage harvester, forage harvester, uh, so we'll just have to think about that at the time, but for now we're just going to crack straight into the planting, uh, we're going to jump into a little bit of a time lapse now and we'll see you when we finish. So unfortunately we ran out of fertilizer. I thought we were actually going to be okay with fertilizer and it would be seed we ran out of, but uh, other way around on this field. Must be down to the soil conditions. It was certainly seed we ran out of before fertilizer in the other one. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a learning there. Um, but we carried on, we decided just to uh, forfeit the bonus that we get from that. Um, but let's just go have a look at precision farming and see if we can see what caused it. And there you go, you can see down here we've definitely got a section of loam right across the very bottom, and if we compare that to the other field, which was completely silty clay, uh, I'm assuming that the loam probably takes more fertilizer than the silty clay did, which is why we ran out uh, going through this side rather than the other field, uh, and it was not the seed, it was the fertilizer down here which dictated things, but there we go, we'll, uh, we'll take the hit on those few sections, uh, like I said, it's going to be pretty frustrating to come back down here, uh, a pretty frustrating field to harvest, and in fact I'm already considering that uh, we'll use course play, uh, sorry, auto drive to run the forage wagons and uh, we'll drive the forage harvester because that might be a better solution. But anyhow, let's head on back down to the yard, get this parked up, put away. We're not going to need this planter again for some time now and we'll go and see how progress is going on over with the uh, tractor planting the oats. Well, we've joined the worker in course play over here in the field with the oats, and they've only got a couple of passes left to go there. Uh, we're down to 6% seed, 280 litres, so it's going to be pretty touch and go 
as to whether they're going to get finished. They haven't used much fertiliser up though, I think we were on 77% when we topped them up with seed last time, so uh, obviously not a huge demand for fertiliser, and you can see that up in the top corner there, mineral fertiliser application, it's only adding uh, about 25, I'd say about 45 kgs per hectare, so not a huge amount at all going on with the crop. So uh, let's just ride along here for a little bit, let them finish, see how far we can get through, whether there is going to be enough seed. In fact, I reckon, is there five passes left there? Five or six passes, if it uses less than 40 litres on a pass, then I think we will get finished. But let's just wait and see how far it goes. In fact, I think there's a little bit more than five because it goes on the other side of that line. Let's just see on this pass how much we use, starting off on 250 litres. Well, we've actually used close to 100 litres on that pass. 250 down to 155, 95 litres. So we don't even have enough for two more passes. So it's only about one and a half. So we'll head back over to the yard, we'll grab the pickup, the seed tender, throw a little bit more seed in that, and bring that over here so the uh, work can get finished off on this field. We grabbed an extra 1100 and 11 litres to be exactly precise. We did that pretty well. We'll just head on down here. I think we can get into the field just on the other side of this ditch. Pretty sure there's no bushes or anything along there. And uh, we'll be able to meet up with the planter when they get to the other end and uh, get them topped up, give them enough to finish off as they head on down the last couple of passes. Let's just see if we can draw off the uh, auger there close enough to be able to get the seed in. Draw it further. Not quite. I think it might be easier. Oh, no, there we did hit it. Might be easier to back the uh, planter up a little bit and get it in there. No, we've hit it. There we go. Too far now. There it is, going into the actual hopper. That's good. That will give them enough to finish off uh, the field. So we'll get that done. That's all finished. Everything folded up, put away, and uh, we'll get this guy back underway, and we'll be able to uh, go and get everything finished for the planting. That'll be all our fields planted and uh, growing. There they go, back underway. Probably three passes left, and uh, they'll be done. So we'll uh, get this parked up back over at the yard, and we'll be back over to watch them finish. And there we are, the workers getting the last of the oats finished. A little strip here to do, and they'll be at the end of the field. Now we're going to race around, there is a little pieces in the corners, just with the way it turns on the headlands, that we will go and get done, just to keep it nice and tidy. And uh, then we'll be all finished and back over to the yard. Get this put away, and uh, we'll have everything planted, which will be great. Well there we are, we've got the big horses put away in the sheds, the cedars and planters both packed away nice and neatly. As the rain seems to be setting in, I thought the forecast showed it clearing, but uh, we are look like we're stuck with it for now. Uh, perfect episode though, it was great to get all that planting done. Let's just go and take a quick look at the map. So we've got 133, 134, have oats in them, 135 and 195 down here, both with corn. So that is good, uh, we've got our grass growing in there in 47 and 48, clover in 203 and up here next to the animals, and then over here you actually notice our alfalfa is ready to harvest, so we might look at getting in and mowing that next time and uh, getting that all cut up and done for what we're doing. I can't even remember what I said to do for it now, whether it was alfalfa hay or alfalfa silage. We'll have to have a look at our maize plus and figure out what is the best uh, outcome for us. So we'll go and suss that out. And now one other thing I was just looking at, if we jump into the time saving stop check. I'm sure we only had 35,000 litres of milk at the start of the episode. In less than two hours, we've uh, produced another 4,000 litres of milk, which has pushed our price up uh, from what was about 26,000 to up to 28,000. Now, that is enough to be able to use that money to buy a trailer. So we might do it the reverse way and buy a trailer, take a loan, buy a trailer, sell that milk, and then repay that off to get the money out. And we'll go have a look at what trailer we're going to buy and we'll sort that out next time. We don't need it just yet because... Uh, the trailer has about a 60,000 litre capacity, so we might as well wait till we've got a full tank load of milk to go and sell. We had a couple of options for tankers that I've had a look at through ModHub, uh, but we're probably going to try out the TLX here, 21,820. A few configuration options which might push that price up a little bit higher, but we're not going to get anywhere near the price that the other ones were. And a very healthy, healthy 67,000 litre capacity, so we can haul quite a bit of milk with that to the dairy each and every time that we get it full. So if that's the case, having those cows and all the effort we've put into feeding them has paid off. Uh, but it was nice to have an episode where we haven't focused on that at all. Now as always, hope you have enjoyed that one. I'm looking forward to getting in and testing out the alfalfa next time. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you 
in the next one. Mm -hmm.